Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. I appreciate you coming out and braving that, the frigid temperatures this morning. And I heard it's going to get colder this week, right? Colder? Just got all your groceries, got gas, so don't go anywhere, right? <laughs> but what's that, Don? Oh, you have to go to the bread line. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Well, some of those are pretty, so some of those lines are pretty long, Don, you know. You know, it's going to be bringing a couple blankets with you. And <laughs> okay, I was looking to see if we have uh, any announcements listed. We have, uh, uh, this month is the Week of Compassion, so we do have... Uh, that ministry. Uh, I'll just go ahead and, and read this. This is through our denomination and is a chance to reach out to those beyond our community and into other states and countries. In this time when we are so closed uh, off from others, it is easy to forget those who are out of sight and out of mind. We who have what we need and more are challenged to give to those who have nothing, not even uh, clean water. So, uh, let's thank the Lord for his blessings to us and ask him <clears throat> to show us how we can be uh, a help to them. Does anyone have a, a quick announcement? Anything to share uh, before we have our call to worship? Anybody? Okay, let's all stand together uh, for our call to worship this morning. Jim, we're a little bit off balance here. You might get tipped over some if you don't, you don't get... Okay, <laughs> good thing we're not in a boat, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord, you that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to God's name, for God is gracious. Okay, our opening hymn is We Praise Thee, O God, Our Redeemer. It's number 334. If, uh, if you know this one, Sing it out best you can. I'm not sure if I do. Oh, praise the Lord. That's a familiar melody. <laughs> we are 
offer And gladly our songs of true worship we raise Thy strong guidance Our God is beside us To Thee our great Redeemer forever be praised Well, it took one time through just to kind of learn it, uh, <laughs> but that's a really a good, really a good hymn, though. Praise the Lord. Let's open up with prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for each one that is here this morning. Lord, as we've just gathered together in your name, and we've come, Lord, to give our thanks and praise to you. So, Father, I, I commit us into your hands. Thank you, Lord, for being with us this, this past week for your watchful care, Lord. And as we begin this new week, uh, Lord, we just want to commit it to you. Father, listen as we say together as a family the prayer that our Lord taught his first disciples in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to share with everyone a little bit uh, of an update concerning uh, Dorothy Cornell. Uh, she's still in the hospital and Jim was sharing that she's kind of like on a roller coaster where it seems like she's doing better and then she gets goes down again and gets a little better and then goes back down again and so it's uh, the main thing is uh, just trying to take care of this infection that she has. And so uh, let's remember, let's remember Dorothy and the family. Uh, also too, to continue to remember uh, Charlotte's daughter. Uh, I mentioned that she has uh, the virus. Also um, for Rebecca Beach, we've been praying for her and, and for Jim and the family. Uh, Charlotte, uh, continue to remember Charlotte in your prayers. Uh, last word is that she has a blood clot that they're trying to take care of right now. So um, this is before they actually go and see what, uh, what procedure they're going to try to do, you know, for Charlotte. Chris, uh, he's still kind of in the same situation there. Uh, this is a, a co-worker of mine as far as trouble with his shoulder. They're, he's been to the doctor and x-rays and different things, and they just can't find out what's uh, wrong yet. So, uh, and also for Chris's mom, uh, Brigida, continued prayer for her. Uh, another co-worker of mine, uh, her name is uh, Shelly is in need of prayer. Also, Jane and uh, Lauren Levitt, uh, 
prayer for them. Just They've just been through a rough time and uh, special prayer for, for Lauren. Can I share what happened to her? Uh, Joellen, I guess at, at home there was a, uh, a shelf that, that fell on her and uh, she got in, injured from that. Okay, so the, <clears throat> with the, the shelf that fell on her head, it, it knocked her out, basically. So, continued prayer for, uh, for Lauren. Prayer for our, uh, for our shut-ins. Uh, Joellen mentioned that Barbara Stiver is, uh, is doing pretty good. She's doing pretty good right now. And... Uh, Continuing to just uh, recuperate from her from her surgery, so continued prayer for for Barbara. Everyone has gotten their their vaccination that have been able to get it. Not yet, Carol. Okay. Uh, I know I've been going on the website for Donnell for this upcoming week, uh, but I keep getting, you know, no appointments available, but that's just through Giant Eagle. Uh, I don't know if there's another maybe number that I can call, but she doesn't have, you know, access to the computer. I've got a laptop at home, so I try to, I'm trying to do that for her just to get uh, her an appointment, but maybe you can suggest to me to... Wait, I'm sorry. I'm Mercy, Health. Mercy Health. Okay. Because uh, th she's due this week. And so my mom and dad and sister got the first ones. Uh, now, I guess on the 10th, they're able to go for their second one. And they're hoping that it won't be four and a half hours like the first one was. They were, they were in the long line at the Trumbull County Fairgrounds for the first one. And, uh, of course, nobody expected that situation to happen, but they got through the first one, and so, so now on the 10th, they're going to go to the same place and uh, for shot number two. I'm just, aren't you looking forward to maybe the time when we can look out and say, we all got two shots, <laughs> we've had a few weeks gone by, and... We probably still will have to wear these for a while, but uh, at least we have the vaccination. Uh, so let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer and just continue to lift these ones up to him and uh, continued prayer always. Uh, you know, the Bible does uh, tell us the, the need to pray for those who are over us, in authority over us, government. Uh, so... We can continue to pray as a, as a church family for our nation, for our government, uh, for those in, in leadership that God would just, would just touch each of them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we do have uh, this opportunity to come before you now as a family, the family of God. Uh, Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the, in the precious name of Jesus, Father, we come. And Lord, that's the only way we're able to, is, is through Him. And so, Father, we just join our, our voices together. Father, as we lift up our, our country to You, our nation, the leadership. Lord God, for our, our new president, uh, Father, that you would, just by your Holy Spirit, that you would uh, work within his heart and in each heart, Lord, that they would uh, look to you and that, Father, that their constant prayer would be, Father, let your will be done and not ours. Uh, Father, just by your Holy Spirit, we pray, uh, work within Work among, uh, Lord, our, our country, Father, the, the church here in America. Uh, Lord, that we would just be in the place to be able to hear your voice and to know, Lord, that we, that we do walk with you. 
And Father, that you do have a, a plan for us, Lord God, in these days. So Father, lead us, help us. Uh, give us light to take the next step, Lord. Because uh, Lord, we can each say that, uh, Lord, just as Joshua heard, that we've not been this way before. Lord God, we've not been this way before. We can't say that, uh, well, we can look to the past and say this is how uh, they were able to do it. Uh, Lord, we're, we're just, we're just kind of going it and just taking it one day at a time. But Lord, that's what you've told us to do anyway, one day at a time. So Father, we look to you that you would help us this day, this coming week, Lord, just to lean upon you. Father, I want to, to lift up uh, those ones who have who have asked for prayer, Lord, I want to lift up uh, Charlotte and her daughter, uh, Rebecca and Dorothy. Uh, Father, I pray for Chris and his mom, for uh, for Jonathan's mom, Lord, for Jane and Lauren, Lord God. Father, you know uh, these needs. Father, and we just want to lift them up before you and and to place them, Lord God, into your hands. Uh, Lord, whatever uh, the need is, Father, whether it be physical, uh, sometimes they're not only physical, they're, they're spiritual needs, emotional needs, uh, sometimes, Lord, financial, sometimes, Father, just uh, that you would touch them and minister to them, Lord. So, Father, you know the needs, but, Lord, we just want to lift them up to you and place them into your hands, Father. Lord, minister in a special way to, to each one, Father, and as, as you work in their lives, we'll be careful to give you all the thanks and praise for, Lord, what you've done and what you continue to do. Again, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our hymn for our... Uh, communion this morning as we gather around the Lord's table to again think of uh, his willingness to offer his life for you and I so that we might come to know forgiveness of our sins and to have a, a, a and to have fellowship with our God um, our hymn this morning is Jesus keep me near the cross Sure. 
tortured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross O Lamb of God bring it scenes before me help me walk from day to day with its shadow me in the cross shall find rest beyond the river near the cross I'll watch and wait hoping trusting The golden strand Just beyond the river In the cross In the cross Be my glory ever beyond the river. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. <clears throat> Let's pray. Holy God, you are the one who has told us that there is always forgiveness. With you, what we offer you in this moment is the brokenness of spirit that cries out. Gladly and gratefully, what we take from your hand is the piece of broken bread of Christ's body that was broken for our forgiveness. As we drink from the cup that represents us, the shed blood of our seed, Savior Jesus Christ. Cleanse us from every sin. Amen. <clears throat>
want to continue to talk a little bit concerning prophecy, and um, we began talking about some events that are going to take place, and I want to go over a couple of them this morning with you. But as we continue in this study on prophecy, uh, just as a reminder that when we see prophecy in the Bible, is that there's usually there a word of instruction, encouragement, exhortation, that while we see that this is going to happen, the Bible tells us, okay, this is what we need to be doing since we know that it's going to happen. So we can think of this as far as, uh, you know, living in light of these, prof- these prophecies, these prophetic events that are going to, to take place. So God always gives us, uh, this is what we're supposed to do. This is how we're supposed to be watchful. This is how we're to be living when we know certain things are going to, going to happen. So I'm going to talk about a couple of them. And so we're going to look at the events to come. And then we're going to look at a, pl- a practical application. Uh, I think I shared this before. Uh, just as a reminder, this is something that's helped me in, in reading the Bible. As I look at three things, uh, and that is, I make an observation. What does it say? You're reading the Bible. You're reading a portion of Scripture, a, a chapter. You're in a particular, uh, particular book. And... Just ask, what is this saying? Make that observation. And then the second question is, what does it mean? Ask the Lord to to help in understanding uh, what it is that he has put in his word, and that is the interpretation. Okay, so we have an observation. What does it say? We have an interpretation. What does it mean? And then the third thing is that we have an application. What does it mean for me? What does it mean for us as we, as we read the Bible? And so hopefully that, uh, that can help you as, as it has for me uh, to kind of keep those in mind as you're, as you're reading uh, the Bible. What does it say? What does it mean? And what does it mean to me and to us as a church family? The two things that I wanted to look at this morning, and I want you to kind of Picture them like bookends almost, okay? A shelf, there's a book, and sometimes you have these bookends, one on one side, kind of in the beginning and and at the end, okay? These two events I want you to kind of think of as as bookends, and that is, and I've I've talked a little bit about this, but I want to go to the scripture, at least one of them, concerning the rapture of the church, okay? I've talked about this. But I want us to go and actually see it in the Bible where it's found, okay? Sometimes I'll just share in a message and I'll uh, I'll mention something and we don't always read the scripture, but I want us to see this so that you can look at it too. It's in 1 Thessalonians. This is in the New Testament in chapter 4, okay? And this is the the rapture of the church. And this is, uh, again... This is what is most commonly believed. It's not the only uh, belief as far as when the rapture will take place. But think of the rapture of the church and then the seven years of the tribulation period. And at the end of the seven years is the second coming of Jesus. Okay? Just those three things right now. Rapture of the church. Then the tribulation period, which lasts seven years. We know that to be a certainty a seven-year period, and then at the end of the seven years of tribulation, that's when Jesus comes back to the earth. Now, the rapture and the second coming are two different events, okay? And it's, it's, it's important that we, that we realize that. And when I read the scriptures, you'll see how different they are, okay? This, again, is the rapture of the church. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Now, here Paul says it two times, those who sleep in Jesus. Well, what is he talking about there? Sleeping in Jesus, the body goes into the ground. Okay? Buried. That person has passed on into glory. Their spirit left their body, and now they're in the presence of the Lord. It says in verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Now when it says the dead in Christ will rise first, we have to keep in mind that it's referring to the body. Those who died those that had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, when they die, their spirit goes on to be with the Lord in heaven. In his presence, the Bible also calls it paradise. It's their spirit that goes into the presence of the Lord, the body that is buried. So when it says the dead in Christ will rise first, it's referring to their bodies that are going to rise from the grave, okay? Then we who are alive and remain. Now, there are going to be some who know the Lord who are going to be alive when that trumpet sounds. It could be today to where the dead in Christ, they rise first. And we who are alive and remain, it says that we, if it happens to come today, if Jesus comes today, it says that we in verse 15, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. See, the, the word rapture does not, is not in the Bible. But rapture means this, caught up. It means that we're going to be caught up together with them, referring to those who's the dead in Christ being raised up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now, can you just try to imagine this for a moment, this, this event? This is like beyond Star Trek, <laughs> beyond Star Wars, beyond anything that we can maybe see in the movies. We've got a shout from the Lord, you know, uh, this, this shout that happens from the Lord. There's going to be this voice of an archangel. There's going to be a trumpet sounding and, and the dead in Christ rising. And we're just going to be like taken up off the earth and meet the Lord in the air. Notice that that's where the meeting takes place. There's not a meeting down here on the earth. We're meeting him up in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay? Many believe that this is what is going to begin the, the tribulation period. Okay? Uh, there's, it's not... With everyone, there are some that believe that, well, the church is actually going to go through some of this tribulation, that we're going to be taken out at some point, either maybe midway through or maybe towards the end, but somehow we're going to be taken up out of the earth before the Lord Jesus comes back again, his second coming. I myself would lean more towards God taking his people out. And that then begins, what did I share last week? The tribulation period, just as a reminder, is a time of judgment. Okay, it's a, it's a time of judgment for the nation of Israel, first of all, for their rejection of the Savior. It's also a time of judgment for all of those nations who were persecuting Israel. God's going to judge them. 
And then also it's going to be a judgment of all those remaining nations, ultimately because of their rejection of the Savior. So it's a time of judgment. So when I read the Bible and I see different times where God promises to, you know, I see him taking his people out before judgment comes. Okay, didn't he make a way for Noah before the judgment came of the rain? Didn't he make a way uh, for Lot before the judgment of, of Sodom and Gomorrah? He made a, he made a way for him. Uh, so God brings his people out before the judgment takes place, okay? Let me just read this uh, one scripture in Revelation just to uh, reinforce this, this idea that the Lord removes and takes his people out before judgment comes, okay? This is in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. It says, because you have kept my command to persevere. This is the Lord that's speaking to a particular church at this time. It says, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Keeping us from the hour of trial, referring to the time of the tribulation and great tribulation period, which is the last three and a half years. So somebody can say amen. God is going to spare his people that we are not going to go through this time of judgment. Those that know him now. Okay, those that know him now will not go into the tribulation period. Okay, so we have the rapture of the church. We have the seven years of tribulation. And then Jesus comes back. Now, let me read you this in Revelation of Jesus coming back so that you can see how much different this is than what we just read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. That's Jesus and his second coming. And notice that when he comes back, the Bible speaks that, that angels are going to be coming back with him. And also it says those who are clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now, who do you think that is? Who do you think that is coming back with Jesus? Well, if we know that God takes his people out. We meet him in the air. We are with the Lord in his presence during that seven years. And then when it's time to come back to this earth, this earth and Jesus is on his white horse, who's going to be coming with him? We are. We are. You see, Jesus is not only coming back, but we're coming back too. So you see, we don't stay in heaven. We don't stay in heaven. We come back. We come back to the earth. And Jesus, what happens then is that he sets up his, what's called the millennial reign of Jesus. Okay? Jesus comes back. We have the judgment of the nations. And Jesus sets up his kingdom that's going to be from Jerusalem. And those of us who came back with him, we're going to be right there with the Lord. For a thousand years, we're going to have this, that we're going to be there with the Lord, and he's going to have this kingdom, and the Bible speaks of how we're going to be right, right there with him, right there with him, basically taking care of the business at hand of what's going to be happening in that thousand years. So 
As we look at these events, we see that there are time periods with them. Seven years, tribulation. Jesus comes back. A thousand years that we're going to be reigning with him. At the end of that thousand, that thousand years, there's some other things that take place. Uh, for time's sake, I don't want to begin to get into those. But I just want you to, to have these in mind of these things that are yet to come. See, when I, when I learned about these, uh, they were, it was very helpful to me just to know these certain events, okay? These key events. Now, there's a lot of details that come with these events, but I think it's important for us just to know the event, just to know that it's coming, that one day we're going to be with him. We're going to be with him in paradise. And then one day... Jesus is going to come back to this earth and we're going to come with him and we're going to be ruling and reigning with Jesus for that thousand years. And you know what? It even gets better. <laughs> it gets more exciting. The things that, that God has in store that he has planned for you and I. Now, I just want us to think about this as a practical application when I read in 1 Thessalonians, and I, and I gave this word a little bit of thought, and this is where I want to kind of conclude for this morning. When we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 about the rapture, okay, about being caught up, important word that is there, okay, in verse 17, it says in then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. If I should ask you this question this morning, maybe somebody can give me a, a really good response, a really good answer. Uh, how long is forever? How long, what does that mean, forever? What does it mean when we see things like everlasting? Everlasting life. I don't know about you, but if I would even try to, try to explain that to a little one. Let, let me try to share with you what it means, what forever means. You know what, it's not as easy as you think. <laughs> Why isn't it, isn't it so easy? Well, well, come on, Pastor Bob. Forever means forever. Never ending. Never ceasing. Never coming to an end. It will always, always, always be. And it will always be that way. Always. Boy, that helped, didn't it? Forever. Forever. Why it's so difficult is because everything in this life seems that it has a beginning and an end to it, doesn't it? Beginning and ends. We look at, well, I know it's uh, 5 to 12. We started our service at 11, and we're going to conclude it at 12. A beginning and an end. This Sunday began at what? A second after 12? This whole day of Sunday is going to go all the way until 12 o'clock for Monday. The day begins, the day ends. When I go to work, I start at 7 o'clock. I usually leave around 3.30, a beginning and an end. The week begins, a week is seven days. A month has a certain amount of days. A season has a, a few months. You see how everything in this life because God gave us something called time. Because time helps us. God is not in time. I think when we see him, he's not going to have a wristwatch on. <laughs> that he has to tell time. He's eternal. Which means that he never had a beginning. And he's never going to have an end. When he made you and I, when he made Adam... In Eve, he made them 
for a forever relationship. It wasn't going to be just, well, you know what? I'm going to create you, Adam, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have you around for a thousand years, and that's it. No. He created forever. Forever. But something happened. Something happened that he knew was going to happen. Sin. And because of that, just as the Lord said, if you partake of this fruit, you're going to die. You're going to die. Yes, when Adam and Eve partook of that fruit, there was a death. They just didn't fall over and breathe their last, but they died. Adam lived 900 and some years before his physical body finally died. But there was a death that occurred. A death that happened in his spirit, in his soul, ultimately with his body, to where that forever got interrupted. But praise be to God, that which Adam lost, Jesus came to bring back. He came to bring back the forever, the eternal, the everlasting for you and I. So we can praise him this morning. We can give him glory that even though, yes, there was a fall that Adam and Eve had back in that garden, sin entered into the picture. It marred, it marred this, this painting that the Lord was, was, was painting. But the Lord fixed it and that he put blood, a red color, in that painting so that you and I could have that forever relationship with him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for the promise of eternal life, of everlasting life. Lord, where you said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, it's, it's hard to comprehend that. It's hard to understand what, it, what it's going to be. But all we know that it's true. It's true. That the life that we've begun now on this side of heaven is going to keep going. And it's going to keep going and going and going, never ending with you in your presence. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you for the promise of eternal life. And we ask, Lord, that you would use us as a church because, Lord, it's your desire that nobody perish. No one, not one single soul, but that all should come to repentance. So, Lord, I pray that you would bring that one person that we can minister to, that we can be a witness to, that we can talk about your love and your grace and mercy that you want to bestow. So, Father, we thank you. And Lord, I commit us into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is Heaven Came Down, number 657. Would you stand, please?
sins were washed away My side was turned to day Heaven came down and glory filled my soul Born of the Spirit with life from above Into God's family divine Justified fully through Calvary's love Oh, what a standing is mine Translation so quickly was made when as a sinner I came, took of the offer of grace that saved me no praises to me. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were away and my night was turned to day heaven came down and glory filled my soul now I've hope that will surely endure after the passing of time I have a future in heaven for sure there in those mansions sublime and it's because of that wonderful day When at the cross I believed Riches eternal and blessings supernal Of His precious hand I received Heaven came down and glory filled my soul When at the cross the Savior made me whole my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. And we all said, Amen and Amen.